If you have been struggling while trying to accept the reality of the narcissistic relationship, if you have been trying to move on but haven't been able to do so, this episode is for you. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In this episode, we will talk about five things that are the most difficult to accept once you leave the narcissist. If that sounds interesting and you are eager to learn more, make sure to subscribe and push the bell icon to stay updated with everything latest that I post over here. Before we dive in, I have a question for you. What is the biggest thing that you struggle with accepting? What is that one thing that you want to accept but can't seem to? Drop your answers in the comments below and help other survivors feel validated and connected. Let's get started with number one. The whole relationship was a lie. In the narcissistic relationship, what did you do? You did not only put your heart, but you also put your soul into the relationship. You gave it everything that you had to offer you sacrificed so many things you accepted the narcissist with all the flaws you believed in the relationship because you believed in their potential you trusted them you truly did you thought that this person is going to be the one i have been looking for throughout my life you believed that this person is the answer to your prayers but what ended up happening you got betrayed you got traumatized you got abandoned you got demoralized you got taken advantage of they made a fool out of you. They took advantage of your kindness. They took advantage of your caring and compassionate, empathetic nature. That gave you a moral wound. That gave you a, a soul injury. Now, accepting that it, it was all a lie means accepting that everything that I did for them or everything that I experienced with them, including those good memories, all of it was a lie. It is also accepting that the person I saw in the beginning of the relationship was so charming, so kind, so present, so tuned, so amazing, is dead, never existed. Accepting that it was all a lie is accepting that the person, the monster that you saw later in the relationship was who they truly were. And all of this is extremely shocking for your nervous system to process. All of this is paralyzing because it activates that freeze response. It's like someone is being stabbed right in front of your eyes and your head cannot make sense of what is going on. You're still thinking, am I imagining things? Is this a prank that is going on? Is it a scene from a movie that is being shot? You can't accept that this violence or this brutality can happen. The same thing is applicable to this. When the narcissist gaslit you, abused you, traumatized you, treated you in ways that are beyond unacceptable, your system was paralyzed by the shock of the reality. You still cannot accept and comprehend that a person can be as dark as this. Number two, the good times were all a lie and you were tricked by an emotional con. The good times that you spent with the narcissist were indeed a lie, but your cognitive dissonance can't let you see the reality for what it is. Why? Because there is this emotional dissonance as well. The same narcissist who made you feel miserable was the person who made you feel good when they treated you nicely. It created this psychological rift a compartmentalization in your experiences and you could not understand what is the lie and what is the truth and you are sandwiched between the two, which is what you're struggling with. So accepting that those good memories were also made up, fabricated just to keep you there in the relationship, just to retain you, is a big deal in itself. Because accepting that those good times were also a lie means letting go of everything. At least now you have something to hold on to, but accepting that it was also a lie means letting go of everything, just being robbed of, of every single moment that you thought you could rejoice later in your life that you could cherish while remembering them it's like accepting that everything from beginning to the end was dark it was filled with darkness and there was no light present whatsoever in between accepting that those good times were a lie is also accepting that you were conned you were fooled by someone you trusted someone and they took advantage of it 
This is why accepting that those good times were a lie is such a difficult thing to do. Number three, they promised you a dream but ended up delivering a nightmare. In the beginning of the relationship, as all narcissists do, they promise you a wonderful future. They promise you things that would happen in the future and create a hope in you, which of course is a hopeless hope, but they hook you through it. And you are charmed by it because the future that they envision is luring, it's just deluding, it's just so sweet to believe in. It's so amazing to fantasize about and to dream about. And then that is what deludes your cognitive ability to think clearly, to ask questions, critical questions that would help you discern delusion from reality. They suck you in through this hypnotic trance they induce through future faking and what you end up finding is miserable, is terrible. You end up finding that all those things they promised, they talked about the future, the potential future you could have with them was just nothing but BS, was nothing but a bunch of lies, it was nothing but crap. It was just a form of bait they used to hook you in so that you could give them what they wanted from you. Attention, money, sex, anything that you can imagine of, anything that they wanted from you. They ended up betraying you because no part of the promised future became your reality. Quite the opposite, they ended up delivering a nightmare. They made your reality a living hell, a living, breathing hell that you had to survive every single day. And number four, you can never get any closure from the narcissist. Someone who betrayed you so much, who left you in the middle of nowhere, destroyed, isolated, who caused you so much harm, at least is expected to give you some kind of closure so that you can move on with your life. But what does a narcissist do? They leave you there for the wolves. They don't care if you die or live. They just leave and never look back if they don't have something to take from you, if they don't think there's a chance to hoover. So they leave you there and you have a bunch of questions to get answers for. That's why you ask, is he a narcissist? Is she such a bad person for real? How could she do that? Why didn't she do this and that? And is she happy? Is he happy with this new person and so on? This is the loop of questions that you get stuck in and that you keep ruminating on and you can't seem to accept that this person didn't even find it necessary to give you some kind of closure so that you can move on. They didn't even respect you or the relationship that much to just give you this final piece of the puzzle so that you can complete it and just be done with them. Quite the opposite, you are left on your own to get answers to these questions, to understand narcissistic personality disorder, to know that there are people like them who exist. There is darkness in the world that you were exposed to. And then to make peace with it, to accept that yes, it happened to me, I survived that. Accepting that they are never going to give you any closure and you would have to move on on your own is what will set you free. Accepting that your closure will come from your experiences because if you look at them very carefully, you have everything that you need to understand, to emotionally process and to let go. Number five and the last one, they manipulated you to keep you around so that they could get supply. This is a very devastating thing to accept and believe because accepting that you were kept as an object and used and thrown away is accepting that you have no self-worth, you have no esteem, you have no confidence. It's accepting that you were treated like a piece of furniture that they used and now it got old, they threw it away. Accepting all of this means you will also have to accept that you got used and fooled by a person. But you don't have to take the blame for it. It's not that you caused it to yourself, it was done to you. They manipulated, gaslit, and did all of the shitty stuff that these people do to take advantage of you. You didn't allow it, it happened to you. You were completely disconnected from that agency that would have helped you to discern if it is being allowed or not. You were in a state of fight, flight or freeze and that is how you kept surviving in the relationship. You had no access to that thinking part of your brain so they kept abusing you. Why? Because they paralyzed your nervous system, they shocked you and you just kept living from one moment to the other. So accepting that you were objectified by someone is extremely difficult because it induces a lot of shame. You feel embarrassed in yourself because you ask questions like how could I allow that? 
Why did I allow that? Why did I let it happen to me? Why couldn't I stop them? But you are saying all of this, you're asking these questions because you have the access to the agency now. You're out of the toxicity and you can have some clarity at this point, which is why you can ask these questions. Back then you did not have those questions. You could not have those questions because you did not have the agency to ask. So giving yourself a lot of compassion, accepting yourself as you are and understanding that it was far more complicated than how it seems now is the key to healing you need to know that yes you were used but at the same time you gave out of your good nature you did what you thought was the right thing to do you did what is in your nature and that makes you different from this entity that you were with in a nutshell accepting things as they are after leaving the narcissist is very difficult but that is what you need to do if you want to set yourself free that was it for today's episode i'll talk with you in the next one till then let the healing begin